New 3i Atlas images just dropped. These are Hubble Space Telescope observations processed by Tony Scarmato using two enhancement methods to bring out faint structure in the coma and jets. What you're seeing here is a four-panel comparison spanning almost one full month. Same telescope, same filter, same processing parameters. Only the object is changing. Let's go panel by panel. Top left, November 30th. This is the earliest frame. A strong, narrow jet is clearly visible, pointing in the sunward direction. The outflow is dense and sharply defined, suggesting a high rate of material release at this time. Top right, December 4th. The jet is still present, the orientation hasn't changed, but the brightness has dropped slightly, and the outflow looks thinner. Same structure, less intensity. Bottom left, December 12th. Again, the geometry holds. No new jets appear, no fragmentation is visible. The material is still being released, but the plume is broader and less concentrated. Bottom right, December 27th. This is the most recent frame. The jet is now much weaker, shorter, fainter. The overall activity level has clearly declined compared to late November. So across all four panels, one thing stands out. The direction stays stable, the structure stays consistent. What changes is the amount of material being ejected. This sequence doesn't show sudden rotation changes. It doesn't show new jets switching on. It shows a steady reduction in activity over time. That's it. That's what this image shows. Here's another new 3i Atlas image set. These are Hubble Space Telescope observations processed by Tony Scarmato using the Unsharp Mask filter. This method suppresses the bright background and brings out subtle structure near the core. Again, four panels, same scale, same field of view. Only the date changes. Let's go through them one by one. Top left, November 30th. The coma is clearly asymmetric. The brightness is offset toward the sunward side. This suggests active material release pushing dust and gas preferentially in one direction. Top right, December 4th. The coma becomes more rounded. The strong directional bias seen on November 30th is already reduced. Activity is still present, but less focused. Bottom left, December 12th. The coma continues to circularize. The brightness gradient is smoother, this points to a further drop in the speed or volume of material being released. Bottom right, December 27th. The coma is now close to symmetric. No dominant outflow direction stands out. Overall brightness is lower, especially in the outer regions. Across these four panels, the trend is consistent. Early on, the coma is shaped by active directional outflow. Over time, that activity weakens. The structure relaxes into a more uniform shape. No sudden changes. No new features switching on. Just a steady decline in activity over the month. That's what this image shows. Now this is a completely different kind of data. This image comes from radio observations, reported in the Astronomer's Telegram, using the upgraded Giant Mito Wave Radio Telescope. What you're looking at is not an optical image. There's no dust tail here, no visible coma. This is a radio contour map. Let's break down what the image shows. The colored contours represent radio flux density, measured in Jansky per beam. Red and yellow mark the strongest signal. Blue and purple are weaker background levels. The elongated shape at the center is the radio detection of 3i atlas. Notice the contours are smooth and continuous. There's no fragmentation, no multiple peaks. That tells us the radio emission is compact and coherent, not random background noise. The team reports detections on December 17th and December 19th, with a signal strength above 10 sigma. That's a strong detection by radio astronomy standards. What matters here is what radio emission implies. It doesn't mean propulsion. It doesn't mean anything artificial. Radio emission like this is consistent with ionized gas, plasma interactions, 
or charged particles interacting with the solar environment. This fits with an object that is active, but whose visible outgassing is already declining. So when you line this up with the Hubble images, the picture is consistent. Optical activity is fading, but the object is still interacting with space around it. Different wavelength, same story. That's all this image tells us. So that's where things stand. Hubble shows the visible activity steadily fading. Radio data shows the object is still interacting with its environment. Different wavelengths, same object, same timeline. The open question now is simple. Are we watching the final phase of surface activity? Or just a temporary lull tied to rotation and orientation? If you want to follow how this story develops as new data comes in, subscribe and stay with the channel. And if you see something in these images that deserves a closer look, leave your thoughts below. We'll keep this focused on what the data actually shows.